I'm excited to welcome on one of the top rising stars of 2022. What's going on today, bro? Nothing much, man. What, what about yourself? Not much, man. So you're, you're part of the 2022 class. We know what's going on a couple of weeks ago. You guys were able to start getting contacted by coaches. What's this process been like for you now? Oh, the process has been really good. You know, I like a coach be calling my phone. They, you know, they, they all say they're they going to start with Kobe. Uh, recently, I got offer from August, you know, Dayton. Yeah. And that's what you just said. I mean, obviously, some of the most recent ones are like Rutgers, are like Dayton. You've had Iowa State for a little bit. Starting to get yeah. high, kind of high major big schools, what's it feel like? It feel good. You know, it feel good to be, you know, like when you're home, you know, you, you be working out so much for this time. When, when it's co- – when, I mean, when, when the time is not for college coaches start calling you, like, you just feel like, okay, so, like, my work is, you know, it's kind of good. Like, I just got to keep doing the, the same thing I've been doing. And how about some schools that haven't offered you yet but have shown a lot of interest? Who are those schools? Oh, they a lot. Florida State, Miami, uh, City Hall. I mean, a lot of school. I forgot, I forgot some school, though. A lot of school. And for you, you're a player that's not ranked in anything yet, but – a lot of people are starting to get the hype behind you. People are starting to see how special you are. I just had AJ Neal on a little bit ago, and he just talked about you probably are going to become the greatest player ever to play at West Oaks, which is a pretty high praise. Think about how many great players are coming from there. So seeing you, what kind of player do you think you're going to become? How elite can you think – what do you think your ceiling is? Um, if I keep working hard, you know, keep doing my things, keep listening to my coaches, you know, I feel like I'm going to be – I don't know. I'm a, I'm a hand up rank, you know. Mm-hmm. Something like that. I might hand up to a big D1 school because, like, people keep sleep on me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm just going to keep working and keep doing my things. People are going to be shocked and surprised. Like, who is this boy? And as you just said, I mean, you, you've had a pretty solid year. You had a lot of pretty good games this year, playing national stage, playing grind session. What's it going to be like? What are you working on now for your, for your junior season? I'll be working on my shots a lot. Like, since, since this quarantine things, I just be working on my shot and my handles. Cause like I know this season gonna be like I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna have the ball like you know some some time because like you know we are set on Miguel last year you know they all left so it's it's nice us it's myself Eddie Neal like we we gotta step up so like I'll be working on my shot and my handles every day. And as you said, there's gonna be a lot of guys moving on now to college. It's you, it's AJ, a couple other guys. Who else is maybe possibly joining the team? Do you think there's new guys coming in that's gonna kind of help? have a big role in the team next year? Yeah, we got Jordan. He's from South Miami. Yeah, he's going to help us. And we got the big one, Manny. He's from Congo, just like me. Yeah, he's going he, he gonna to help us a lot, too. Yeah. And to have a guy like AJ Neal, a guy that's also an elite player, say about you, talk about you being probably the greatest player ever to play at West Oaks eventually. What does that mean? Uh, that mean what did you just say? Like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I've been playing with AJ since my freshman year, since I moved here. So AJ and I, we kind of close. Like, mm-hmm. we, we're really big together. When, when him and I decide to play together, like, I hope, I mean, I can't say nobody's going to beat us. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because, like, AJ, AJ, AJ is a top player. So I'm, I am a top player, but people don't really know me exactly. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. we're we going to prove people wrong this year. Like, we're just coming for everybody. And he also talked about with you, even at practice and games everywhere, there's only one thing you see, and that's food. And that you want to go out there and just prove everyone wrong. You always go out there. Just, you don't really care who you're, who's guarding you, but you go down there, dunk on them. You go out there and block the shot. What goes into that mentality? You know, where I come from, we don't, we, we, we doesn't care. Like, we go outside to kid to eat. Cause like, it's, it's something like you gotta go there. It's you or it's them. You know what I'm saying? You don't wanna be someone they gonna keep all the time. Cause like, I'm not, I'm not wearing people keep sleep on me. So I gotta go outside there, pull people on, kid them. I don't care. Was I'm gonna play with? If you can be rank or whatever, like myself, I told myself I don't, you know, what I'm saying I don't mind if you can be number one player in my class. I'm gonna go in the game, play against you. I'm gonna go hard on you. Yeah. And for you, we see the potential. Obviously, that's why so many colleges have already offered you. But what do you think it's gonna take for school for people to start ranking you high? I gotta improve my game. Like I gotta improve my first of all my shot because like I'm six eight. Basically, it's just, yeah, I got to improve my shot and my handles if I can't do those things. You know, because I play defense, you know, you saw my highlights, you know, dunk on people. Yeah, I just got to improve my shot and my handles and people going to start recognizing my game. And how about growing-wise? Are you probably going to stay at 6'8", do you think, or do you think you still have some more room to grow? Oh, 
I'm still going. I'm not done. You know, I'm 15 years old, so like, I, mm-hmm. I'm probably gonna end up 6'10 or 6'11. Wow. And when you talk about you development wise, you're gonna go out there next year and have a much larger role. You're gonna be one or two second option on the team. What's your numbers you're kind of looking to have? What's what would you say would be successful year numbers for you this upcoming year? Uh, I might go for the double double because like last year I lead West Oak with the double double. So like this year I want to do more, even go for you know double double every game again, and I want to add some assists too. Like you know I, I gotta be able to if if I wanna if I wanna be there. if 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 I wanna be ranked you know I gotta add some something on my game. So like I'm, I might go for you know twenty and fifteen every games. You know, 20 points, 15 remains every game. Yeah, even more than 20, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And yeah. going back to your recruiting process, we have a lot of these schools already talking to you, have shown offers and interest to you. Right now, though, when you talk about some of these schools and you talk to these coaches, what's the personality type that you really like from a coach? Oh, I like the way the coach talks to me because all of them like my game. They like my motor. They're like, they be telling me they like the way I play because, you know, every time they saw me play, they feel like I, I love basketball. I really want it. So, like, that's the thing I love to them. You know what I'm saying? And they, they really, like, they, they really show you love when, when, when they call my phone. Like, today, the coach from Rutgers, he just called me. Like, he was really excited. I mean, I was excited either. Like, he was really happy to talk to me on the phone. That's awesome, man. And you go to the first day that like, coaches start calling you. What was that night like? Did you get a call at midnight? What was that first night like? Like that first night, it was just like, not a lot, but I was surprised and shocked. Like, like coaches know me like that. I didn't know like people know me like that, but like, in, I mean, so you know, all the screen flow that contacted me that night, I was, I was surprised. I even told my coach, like, he said, This is nothing, just gotta keep working. I'm like, wow, yeah. Was your first call at midnight? My first call was uh, six in the morning, yeah. That's awesome. And let's talk about some of those offers. One of them you talked a little bit about is Rutgers, obviously. That's a school that has been obviously a power five. They're a high major school, but they haven't really become that attracting until now Cliff obviously commit there. See, when you see a top 50 kind of guy like Cliff commit to a school, how much more attraction does that make Rutgers? Uh, I mean, I, I, for now, I don't, I don't really know exactly because we, we just start talking. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. I just start talking to, to that school, but like they, they really show a lot of interest because like I got – I got my, you know, he, uh, he, you know, Corey Saunders, while he played at West Oaks, he went there too. So, like, I, uh, I keep looking at him, you know, what he did over there. So, like, you know, that's cool, kind of on my mind. So, like, yeah. Another one of the schools dates in the school that we see obviously have a lot of talent, especially at the power forward, small forward spot. We especially know who's out there this past year. Seeing the way they can put a guy in the NBA and turn a guy from a guy who wasn't really well known, Obi Topkin, to becoming a top five pick in the draft. How appealing is that to see that a program can get guys to the NBA? Oh, uh, that program seems really good because I, I like the way they play. You know, they, they play in transition. And I, I like the way they use their big and their forward, you know, their wings. So, like, yeah, that's cool. You know, it's kind of – I mean, I, I keep looking. That's cool, too. Also, I forgot to mention Alabama. Like, the coach of Alabama keep on texting me, you know. They keep on reaching out to me every day, almost every day. Also, Kansas State, Kansas State, the coach from Kansas State, he called me, they text me. And they, they they spoke with my coach too. They 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 like me. They 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 really like me. They are, yeah they are. And with Kansas State, we know that's where one of your teammates is now. Sal Miguel's out there. Just before we talk about K State though, what what was it like playing with South and what's your guys' relationship like? You know, first of all, him and I from Africa, so mm-hmm. like, <laughs> so like basically, him and I was we we were close. We 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 shared the same room. Like Seton was. You know, it was I was it was somebody I was look up to. I mean, I was looking up to, cause like the the way he was playing, he never give up. You know, he was always pushing me to go. You know, cause some game I was like I don't feel like playing. Seton always was there on my back, like to push me to go play hard. I really enjoyed to play with Seton. I, I learned a lot from him. So, like I really appreciate him. Like I, I know he gonna do he, he gonna do good there. So like good luck. I just don't wanna wish him good luck over there, to Kansas State. <laughs> and. <laughs> With Stelton, I mean, personally, I think he's going to be a great guy. I think he's going to be able to go prior to the NBA after one or two years. But if he's still at Kansas State, by the time you, you're looking to commit to school, well, would that be kind of an attracting thing to you to possibly go play with someone like Stelton, a former teammate again? Yeah, why not? We, we never know. You know, things happen. Yeah. Stelton is a good guy. So like, why not? Without a doubt. And you did talk about Alabama. I mean, I'm pretty close with the whole coaching staff. They've really started to revamp this entire program and 
They have a bright future now. Seeing the way that they're kind of restructured the rosters, what's it like? What's your bond like with, with Alabama? Uh, Alabama is a good school, you know. Like the conference, STC conference is a tough conference. So I actually looking at Alabama like as, as a big school. So to go there, to go there, I I I gotta be ready and prepare. You know, I gotta I gotta prepare myself to go there. So like, yeah, Alabama is a school that you know. I can't say I love, I like them, but like it's a school I, I really look up to now too. You know, mm-hmm. I say Rutgers, Dayton, Alabama. Yeah, those come my mind for now. They they the one who wish out to me the most. So like, yeah. Okay. And you just talked about Alabama is a big school. Some so are some of the other schools we've talked about. For you, when you go to the recruitment process, is possibly going to a school that is a high major, a Power Five conference kind of school, a priority to you, or do you not really matter if it is a high major, a mid major, a low major? Uh, it's not matter to me. You know, you know the, the the goal is to go to go play college and go to the league. That's my goal. So like, it's not matter to me to go to the high major or low major school. The goal is to go to the D one school. You know, it's not it's not it's not the college. It's you. The, the way you play. You know, it's it's depend on you. You the one who gotta show people that you will you ready to go to the league. So it's it's not it's not about the school. It's about you. So like, yeah. I'm happy you said that because that's something I think not a lot of guys always look at. And that's, we see so many of these guys, like John Morant's probably the prime example right now. We see, obviously, so many different guys, Damian Lillard, and the list goes on. Guys go to mid-majors or even low-majors, and they come from the best players in the NBA. And I mean, like you said, just find the best fit for you, and that's what obviously can help you pan out, because the ultimate goal is the NBA. Yeah, yeah, sure, definitely. And when you look at the NBA, that's your ultimate goal. Who's the guy maybe maybe look at that you'd like to possibly model your game after, or maybe take pieces from and put into your game? Uh, I say I, I'm gonna say uh, Spicy Pete Pascal Siakam. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pe- people say I look like him. You know, obviously <laughs> I was like, okay, like people say I look like him. So why not? So I I be looking at him. Is I like you know the way he play, the way he talked, you know, interview the the way he talk to the camera. Yeah, the, 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 I mean I be looking at him you know, actually on everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And speaking of him, I mean obviously he's from Africa as well. And you're from Congo. I mean, let's talk about what it was like growing up out there. Kong, you know, go up in Congo, you got to be tough. I mean, go up in Africa, you got to be tough. Because, like, in Africa, you, you got to fight for everything. You know, things don't come easy. So, like, in Africa, I, I actually, it's like, out, going up outside, it's not like here we got gyms, you know, everything is just outside. Because, like, when, when I started playing basketball, I didn't have shoes, I didn't have anything. So... I had to fight for for it, like you know what I'm saying. So, so like, yeah, Africa, you, Africa is really tough, man. Africa, Africa is really a good continent. I mean, especially my country. People don't really know about my country, but my country is is a good place. It's, it's really a good place. People think we live in a jungle or whatever, but like we got <laughs> <laughs> we got house in Africa, especially in my country. We got house. We got some good places too. Especially now, you know, we got Serge Ibaka in the league. Mm-hmm. Your Serge Ibaka, he he, he helped a lot. You know, people start playing basketball because of him, especially myself, too, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. And there's two things you said I want to talk about. The first one is, I, obviously, America, a lot of people in America have the perception that Africa is all a jungle. It's all I – mean, there's not really any cities or life there. For you, yeah. I'm sure you've had someone say that to you before. What's maybe the funniest interaction you've had with someone where they just weren't necessarily informed about Africa that well? I mean, when somebody talks to me about Africa, like, people – when people say Africa is jungle – I don't really say something back to them because I just feel like, you know, they, they don't know what they're talking about. They, they don't know Africa like that. So why I'm going to waste my time talk to, talking to somebody we don't know my place? You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So, like, so like it's, it's just funny. I mean, it sounds funny to me. I'd be laughing. That's it. Yeah. And the other part you said was obviously Serge Ibaka. And I know he has a documentary, Son of Congo, about him. And you talked about how he has a big impact. One of the first guys from Congo to play in the NBA. And he obviously gives back I know a lot to the community. Seeing a guy that's made it out, made it to the NBA, and kind of come back, what was it like? What was it? What's it kind of like being as a role model? Oh, uh, being really good, cause like you know, Serge Ibaka didn't have nothing at home. I mean, his mom passed away when he was seven years old. His dad got arrested. His dad went to the jail. So actually, he grew up in the, in the street. You know, saying so Serge Ibaka's story. Like, I mean, every time I'm looking at him, I just keep thinking on Serge Ibaka. So I'll be like, if Serge Ibaka, if if Serge made it, you no, know, I'm gonna make it. I'm I'm gonna make it too. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, he swaggle, but I come just like us. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, like, Serge Ibaka's story, really, I mean, really 
on my mind, you know what I'm saying, Louis, like, like for you, you cannot stop. You got to go. You got to go. You got to push all the time. You, you step on the court. So, like, yeah. Like, Serge Ibaka pushed, I mean, some people to play basketball. You know, some parents didn't didn't really know, like, you can leave this country. You can leave Africa to go play basketball somewhere else. Serge Ibaka was the first one to do it. So, my parents were like, okay. I mean, now my parents, every parent was like, if Serge Ibaka made it, all kids may have the chance to make it too. That's why they start letting some kids to go play basketball. Do you have a relationship with Serge Ibaka? Mm, yeah. You know, my not my cousin, but like the one who helped me to come here. He knew me since I was six years old. His name is Muki. He an uh, assistant coach at West Sox. So like he knows Serge Ibaka. They, they really close. Him, Serge Ibaka, low border. I know Igor, he play at OKC. Oklahoma State, that's his low border. He know me. He be, I mean, he be calling me, you know, not every day, but every weekend, you know, he be telling me to do not stop, always going on, uh, always pushing off. Serge Ibaka called my cousin. He was like, he want to work out with us. I mean, with me in the summer, but, like, you know, this virus came and everything just shut down. But, yeah. Gotcha. And as I said, I mean, obviously, it's the Serge Ibaka documentary. He talks a lot about the way he grew up, which wasn't obviously the easiest way. Like you said, seeing a guy that was able to make it through what he grew up in and be able to make it, how much of an inspiration was that to you? Oh, that was, you know, that at first that was like hard because my mom told me you, you just gotta go to school, start playing basketball. Because I started playing basketball uh, very young, mm-hmm. very young. When Serge Ibaka left, I was like, see if Serge Ibaka made it, I'm gonna make it too. My mom first said, no, you know, gotta go to uh, you gotta go to school. My dad was like, you gotta go to school too. But my, I don't know, you know, I just fell, fell in love with basketball. I was like, no, I just gotta keep going. I, I cannot start with these things, you know. And when you yeah. look at the, where Serge Ibaka grew up, I mean, how close did you live to where Serge Ibaka grew up? Not that far. Like, I can say 10, 10 miles away from where Serge Ibaka grew up. Because, like, where Serge Ibaka played, I used to go there to play to the same call. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And as you said, I mean, it's not America in terms of having basketball courts, indoor gyms, air-conditioned gyms all over the place. How was it kind of going through the grind of trying to find the gyms and they're not always being the nicest gyms and courts. I mean, you, you got to go, especially myself, when I start playing basketball, you got to go far away to find a gym to play. And, you know, I stopped playing, but I told you I didn't have shoes like, you know, like now. Mm-hmm. Like, in Africa, we don't have a lot of gym like here. You guys got a gym everywhere. You know, every neighborhood, you're going to find somewhere to play basketball. In Africa, you got to go far away to find a gym to play. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's kind of it's, it's kind of hard. It's, it's not that easy. My, now it's kind of easy because, like, you know, we got people, made, you know, we got Africa in the league. Now we got Serge, we got Shakan, we got Jordan B, you know, we got Bismarck, Biombo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so now now it's kind of, you know, good in Africa. That's, you know, a, a lot of people start playing basketball in Africa. So, like, I know for sure after three or two years, you know, you're going to see a lot of African now in America, you know, in Europe, some, some you know, some places like that playing basketball. And as you said, Serge and a lot of those guys have now given back kind of help do a lot of stuff back home. What's some of the biggest things you've seen improve in Congo now that Serge Ibaka has helped make things and along with all the other guys? Uh, Serge Ibaka, I mean, he made two gyms back home, you know, big gyms, you know, so that people can go to the gym, play, start working out. He gave stuff, you know, shoes, basketball, everything. So, like, he went there, especially when he won the the NBA final, he went back home, he started talking to, to those young boys. So like now, nah, I, I be my mom be sending me videos of them, you know, start playing basketball. That that thing made me happy. So that's why you know I gotta thank Serge Baga for what he be doing for Congo. And I think Congo is obviously one of the leading countries in Africa. That's kind of really become and started to become a big basketball country now. And you see, obviously, the guys like Serge Bismarck. You see all these guys as they who they turned out to be. Now you got guys like you. You got a lot of the guys coming over. How much more talent do you think is in Congo right now that we're gonna start seeing? as a high-ranked high school player, college, NBA player? A lot. I mean, like, like I told you, after two, three years, you're going to see a lot of Congolese basketball. Because, like, we got, I can say, a lot of Congolese in the league. Serge Baka, Bismarck, you know. We got Mutombo. You no, know, I mean, he don't play. But we got Munje too, he from Congo. So, like, basketball in Congo going to go up. I mean, going to be... I mean, we got a lot of talent. You know, it's just... People, people gotta start because people don't really go back home in Africa. You gotta fight, you know, search back dog. I mean, you gotta fight. You, you, you gotta find someone to help you to come to the state. But if people start going back there, they're gonna find a lot of good, talented kids. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we see a lot of other countries developing as well. One is like Angola, obviously, 
where Stalin's from, a lot of the countries starting to come up. You just see overall guys from Africa, guys from Europe, China, Australia, all over the country and world. What's it like seeing basketball become such an international and such a diverse sport? That makes me feel good. I mean, like, you know, that means Africa is not only the jungle place. We got, we got people who can play basketball too, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and as you said, I mean, we know you're now in America. You're playing at West Oaks. How did this all come to be? How did you get the opportunity to come to America? Oh, my story is kind of long because, like, I started playing basketball until I was six years old. I got my cousin, you know, my family, the one who helped me to come here. Mm-hmm. Actually, they, the, the Janine B team came, came home for the camp. You know, they, they signed my name inside, so I went to play the camp. I played the camp. I, I, I was the MVP. I was the MVP of the camp. Then they, they, they invited me to go to Senegal to play the NBA Academy camp. I went there. I played I play, I play good. They, they, they liked my games, so they invited me to go to, to South Africa to play the BW border camp. So I went there. I played good either. So they took me with the team, Africa team, to play the Junior NBA uh, championship in Orlando. Mm-hmm. I mean, my first time to come here. So like, I came, I played good. You know, I, I got my highlight. Just type my name on Google, you're going to see my highlight. So, like, yeah. So, West Oaks saw me on ESPN play, and they, they, they really liked me, but they didn't know how to get me. So, like, they, they contact uh, somebody from, I mean, somebody who played with my coach. Mm-hmm. They, did, they didn't know he was my coach. When they contact him, then, when they contacted me, say that's my, my boy. So like that's, that's how they, they made this happen. That's why I came here. So you were in the junior NBA game. I think it was against the the Case Kansas City team, right? Yeah, I play I play against America team in a final. Then we lost that final. Mm-hmm. I, I yeah. That's awesome. And I mean, you now obviously made the transition over to America. How's the transition been? How did you get used to America? Oh, at first that wasn't easy because you know. I had to learn English. I mean, I'm keep learning English, but at like, first I had to learn English because I've been speaking French my whole life. So at first that wasn't easy. To, you know, the food, I, I wasn't used to the food. You know, I was kind of surprised. It was McDonald's, you know, Burger King. I was shocked. So, like, <laughs> with the time, with the time, I, I got used to it. You know, I got used to it. Now, now it's all good. You know, I like America a lot. Now, now it's all good. Do you like American food or your food back home more? I'm, I like my food back home more than American food. <laughs> <laughs> and as you've now got used to America more and more, you just said it's kind of an, a language thing. You had to get used to it, learn how to speak English. What was the easiest way? How'd you kind of get used to learn speaking English? Watching movies. I've been watching movies, listening to music. They, they, they gave me some books when I first came. They said, you got to read this book. Then I start reading, you know, I, I, I just being one people who speak English. That's why I catch up so easy, so fast. And a lot of guys talk about one of the easiest ways for them is by listening to rap songs, listening to music. Would you say that yeah. was one of the easiest ways for you? Yeah, music and movies, you know, mm-hmm. movies and music. That helped me a lot to get better on my, to, for my English to get better. That's awesome. And for you now, as we talked about, you're sitting at a position now, 2022. You got a couple more years till you really start looking to recruiting and commit. What's it going to take for a school to land you? I don't know. Like, I don't, obviously, I don't really know yet. But like they, they really gotta show. You know what I'm saying? They got the school. I got the school gonna wanna give me really. It's gonna, it's, it's, it's gonna be the school gonna like me for who I am. The, that school gotta be, you know, they, they they gotta like me for who I am. They, they gotta like my game. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't wanna go to the school. The school we 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 not we not gonna like me. We gonna just give me for game. You know, you know what I mean? I wanna go to the school. We gonna love me for who I am. We gonna accept me. We, we gonna accept my game. And we gonna help me to go to the next level and to get my education straight. And if you continue to develop and you turn into being a player that AJ thinks you can be, and a lot of guys, including myself, think you can turn into being, you could have the opportunity to possibly go straight to the NBA if that's opened up or at least go to the G League. Are any of those routes something you'd consider? Yeah. You know, everything is, is possible. If, if those things happen, why not? So I'm, I'm going to take it. You know, the goal is go to the NBA, obviously. Mm-hmm. And one of the last things before I let you go is we go back to last season, a couple games I want to talk about. One of them is the Oak Hill game. You guys went out there, a game that a lot of people thought would be impossible as they haven't lost a home game in 23 years. You guys defeat them. What did it feel like to get that win? Oh, that win, because, like, the first time I went there my freshman year, we lost. Mm-hmm. So, my sophomore year, when we went there, you know, everybody, even Seton was, you know, everybody was ready to go there and kill them. First, everything started from the coach. The coach was like, you guys don't have to be scared. I know they never lost the game at home. 
you guys got to fight to play to you know play with your heart with your soul everything then we just went out there we we played we killed them I said and another game was when the COVID stuff was really starting to set in the grand session kind of kind of speed up the whole tournament process you guys had a game against prolific obviously we know what ended up happening there but just take us through that game and how that all went down oh we we lost that game because you know the ref I mean I'm not gonna say they, they were terrible but like they was calling like those far like you know if you touch you know Jalen Green or Neymar Bernard whatever they're gonna call foul on you and they, they I mean now me but my teammates start fighting they, they start fighting then the ref you know he, he gave coach Kenny two tech you know whatever then coach Kenny got mad he said we don't we're not gonna play no more coach Kenny was like let's go let's go then we we cancel the game then they won but we beat them at first you watch the game mm-hmm. we beat them at first yeah, the first game we played, then we beat them. I mean, they're good. They they really good, but we 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 were good too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And when you also talk about your eventual possible destination point for college, or even when you're in the NBA someday, is a school that might have a guy from Africa, a guy from Congo, or something? Would that be attracting to possibly have someone you could relate to on the team? Mm, nah. No. Nah, okay. Cool. And my last thing before I let you go is I know you want to build a legacy for yourself, both what you're able to accomplish on the court and off the court. What would you say you want – what, what do you want to be remembered for by the time you walk away from the game of basketball? I want to be remembered as uh, as me, as Frey, somebody who love basketball, we love to play hard. You know what I'm saying? Somebody who doesn't care about what people say. Somebody who doesn't care about op- people opening. You know what I'm saying? I want to, I, I want to be remembered as, as a tough guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you want to be able to go back to your community and do something there as well. What would you say is kind of your dream? Is it like a building or a court you want to build? Or what would be your dream thing to go back and do for your community? The first thing I want to do is a big camp. Like, I want to do a camp with somebody. And people are not going to forget about that camp. Then, secondly, I, I want to, you know, build a big, big court. Like, you're going to find everything inside, you know. I, I just want to make my people happy. That's why I keep doing this. That's why I keep working out every day to make sure them, you know, they're going to be straight. For, for the awesome. next future, the next future is going to be good. For the That's next awesome, team. man. Well, I definitely appreciate you taking time to come on, my guy. I look forward to seeing what God's got next for you next year, bro. Appreciate you so much for, for having me. Of course, man. You know you're always welcome on, man. God bless. God bless, man. Appreciate it. All right. See you later, bro. All right.